Ismini! Ismini! Ismini, quick, come here! Oh, what is to become of us? Why are we always the ones? There is nothing, sister, nothing this hasn't put us through, and all because we are who we are, the daughters of Oedipus, and because we are his daughters, we took us, hey, the public and the private, the hurt and humiliation. But this, I cannot take. Now wait. Here's what has happened. There's been a general's orders issue. And again, it hits us hardest. The ones we love, it says, are enemies of the state, to be considered traitors. How so? What do you mean? I mean, have you not heard? What I heard was enough. Our two brothers are dead, the Argos troops are drawn, and the pair of us left to cope. But what's next? I don't know. That's why I came outside. The walls in there have ears, and this is for yours only. What is it? You have me scared. And right you are to be scared. Creon has made a law. Eteocles has been buried as a soldier of full honors, so he's gone home to the dead. But not Polynices. Polynices is denied any burial at all. There is to be no mourning, and the corpse to be publicly dishonored, dumped, disposed of like a carcass, left out for the birds to feed on. If you so much as throw in the common handful of clay, you have committed a crime. That's law and order in the land of good King Creon. I'll flush him out, it says. Whoever is in for us is against us in this case. Whoever breaks this law, I'll stone them to death. This is his edict for you and for me, is meaning for me. And he's coming to announce it. I say he's really putting it to us. I say it's a test we're facing, whether we are who we are. Antigone! Antigone, what do you mean a test? If things have gone this far, what is that I can do? You can help me do one thing. What thing is that? His body. Help me lift and lay our brother's body. And bury him, no matter what? Are we sister, sister, brother? Or traitor, coward, coward? What about Creon's order? What are Creon's rights when it comes to me and mine? Think this through for a minute. Think of the line we come from. We are children of Oedipus, daughters of the man who fathered us from his mother. No matter he didn't know, no matter it was Oedipus who brought his own crimes to light and then reached into his eyes to pull them out with his sockets. Still, they drove him out and Oedipus had to perish. And then his wife, the woman who bared her breast for him in the childbed and in the bridebed, she hangs herself in the noose. And now this last thing happens. The doom in our blood comes back, and brother slaughters brother, two of them dead in a day. Are you and I to be next? How do you think they see us? How do you think we fare? Two women defying Creon, faced with the death decree. Women going against the order. It's not a women's place. We are weak, where they are strong. And whether it's this or worse, we must do as we're told. In the land of the living sister, the lords of the land of Tain. Dead know that as well. The dead will have to forgive him. I'll be ruled by Creon's word, and anything else is madness. You are the laws of the land. Sister, let me tell you. From now on, and no matter how your mind may change, I will never accept your help. I am going to bury his body. And if death comes, and so be it. There will be a glory in it. I'll go down to the underworld, hand in hand with the brother, and I'll go with my head held high. The gods will be proud of me. The land of the living sisters, nor here nor there. We enter it and we leave it. The dead in the land of the dead are the ones who will be with longness. And how are you going to face them, is me? If you dishonor their, God, their laws and God's law. Dishonor them I do not. But nor am I strong enough to defy the laws of the land. Live then, and live with your choice. I fear for you, Antigone. But I fear for herself. Oh, stop, this must never get out. Oh, no, 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 broadcast it. I have nothing to hide from the powers of the all. What are you, Antigone? Hot-headed or cold-blooded, this thing cannot be done. But it still has to be tried. Oh, you're mad. You don't have a chance. 
here and now, I hate you for this talk this evening. And the dead are going to hate you. Call me mad if you'd like, but lead me to it. If Creon has me killed, where's the disgrace in that? The disgrace would be to avoid it. Nothing's gonna stop you, Antigone. Nothing's gonna stop the ones that love me from keeping on loving you. guardian of our seven gates, burn away the darkness down on Thebes, desolate the city you have saved from destruction. Agros is defeated, the army beaten back, all their brilliant shields smashed into shards and smithereens. Like a golden eagle, the enemy came swooping, like an eagle streaming down from the sky, hoping to set fire to our seven towers. But the dragon of Thebes had grown teeth. We overwhelmed him the walls, and Zeus blazed his overbearing. A god of will, a god, stiffened our will and locked our arms till the line held. Glory be to brightness, to the gleaming sun. Seven guardians at our seven gates bore the brunt and broke the charge. Our attackers were struck down and stripped of their armor. Their spear and helmets are the spoil of war. We have hung their shields among the trophies. But Paul and Isis and Antiochus, the only trophies they took at Thebes, were each other's deaths. Their doom was sealed. Their banner flew. The battles raged. And they fell together. Their feathers sunk. Glory be to brightness, to the gleaming sun. Glory be to victory. I can feel her wings fanning the air. The joy in my eyes is like the joy in hers, dazzling the city she has saved from destruction. Raise the chariots and ramp the temples. Drown the earth from early until late. Give glory to the god of the dance. Let Bacchus lead us and bear away the dark. Glory be to brightness, the gleaming world. King Creon, all hail to Creon. He's a new king, but he's right for the city at this moment. Now we will know what's what. Why is arranged for this press conference? <laughs> So friends, well done. You from the start have been a loyal crew. You stood by Oedipus when he was at the helm. And when his son stepped in to take his place, you stood by them as well. But now, they're gone. Two brothers badged dread with each other's blood. And I, as next of kin to those that undo, I am next in line. The throne has come to me. Until a man has passed the test of office and proved himself in the exercise of power, he can't be truly known for what he is, I mean, in his heart, mind, and capabilities. Worst is the man who has all the good advice, but his, because his nerve fails, fails to act in accordance with it as a leader should. And equally to blame is anyone who puts the personal off the overall thing, puts friends or family first. But rest assured, my nerve's not going to fail. 
And there's no threat that's going to stop me acting ever in the interest of all citizens. Nor would I ever have anything to do with the country's enemy. For the patriot, personal loyalty always must give way to patriotic duty. Solidarity, friends, is what we need. The whole crew must close ranks. The safety of our state depends upon it. Our trust, our friendship, our security, the good order in the city, and our greatness. Understand, therefore, that I intend to make right what I say by what I do. And hear this first. This ordinance is binding. Concerning the songs of Oedipus, Ethiopes, who fell in our defense, Ethiocles will be buried with full honors as a hero of his country. But his brother, Polynices, an exile who came back to visit us with fire and sword, a traitor, an empty even even prepared to kill his countrymen and desecrate the shrines of his country's gods. Hear this about Paul and Nices. He is forbidden any ceremonial whatsoever. No keening, no interment, no observance of any of the rites. Hereby he is a judge, the carcass for the dogs and birds to feed on. And nobody, let it be understood, Nobody is to treat him otherwise as the obscenity he was and is. This is where I stand when it comes to thieves. Never to grant traitors and subversives equal footing with loyal citizens, but to honor patriots in life and death. <laughs> You have laid down the law, you exercise the power, your regulations hold for the living and dead. And that is why I regard you from now on, my chief advisor. Any other would be better for the job. I don't mean you should work on the ground. Naturally, I have guards out there already as we speak. And why do you call me your chief advisor? I mean. You shouldn't lend the least support to anyone who would go against the order. But who would do that? Who would choose to be dead? Hmm. Death, uh, yes, it would be. But you never know. There's always money lurking. And I never underestimate the lure of the money. What 
are you saying? What man would dare do this? Um, that, for the like of us, we cannot tell. There's not so much as a scrape left on the ground. No sign of paper for that class of thing. No rock marks from a wheel. Nothing but the land, the old house gravel. When the sentry showed it this morning, we were stunned. The corpse had actually gone, disappeared. But then, well, it turned out it was only hidden underneath this coat of dust, as if somebody had attended to it right, observing all the custom. But there were no tears in the flesh, so really it couldn't have been wild animals or the dogs. And then the row broke out, each man shouting, blaming the next, and ready to fight to prove his innocence. We'd have put our hands in the fire to clear us off, swearing by this, and that we'd neither done the deed nor knew who did it. And then, well, once we had more or less calmed down, one man speaks up, and what he stated was really the obvious. You, you would have to be told the deeds could be hid no longer. So that was agreed, and, well, we were the lucky men, the ones that are never welcome, the bearer of bad news. We drew the short straw, and that, sir, is why we're here. Creon, sir, I cannot help but think the gods have a hand in this somewhere. Enough! Don't anger me. Your new precision, my friend, still doesn't give you the right to talk such garbage. The gods, you think, are going to tend to this particular corpse? Preposterous. Did they hide him under his clay for his religion? For burning their colonnaded temples? For attacking a city under their protection. The gods, you think, will side with the likes of him? Here's something else for you to think about. For a good while now, I have had disaffected elements at work here. Certain poisonous minority, I'm ready to admit the rule of law, and my law in particular. I know these people and how they operate. Maybe they're not the actual perpetrators, but they possess the money and the means to bribe their way. And he has long and sinister reach. It slips into the system, changes hands, and starts to eat at the foundation of everything we stand for. Money brings down leaders, warps minds, and generally corrupts people and institutions. But in this case, whoever took the bribe will pay the price. You then, listen to this, for this is my solemn vow. Unless you apprehend or rest and bring before me the one who entered the corpse, I'll hang you out and have you so carved up and pulled apart, you'll be bleeding to be dead. You'll realize then what kind of interest your money earns. You can't, friend, have your palm greased and expect to get away clean. Everything comes out. Can we say a word, or are we dismissed? Dismissed, that's it. You and your news disturb me. It's your conscience that's doing the disturbing. Watch it, guard. You're overstepping here. It's that mystery man who's really got you bothered, hasn't he? I warn you, you had better mind your mouth. But we didn't do it. Oh, yes, you did. The minute you smelled the money. What's happening here, Creon, is that the judge has misjudged everything. And what I'm telling you is this. Unless you expose the guilty party to me, you'll rue the day you bought into this plot. Oh yes, of course. Expose him. Bring him in. But be as that may, this much is sure. Yours truly won't be back here in a hurry. Let's take off.
among the many wonders of this world. Where is the equal of this creature? Man. First he was shivering on a shore in skin, or padding in a dugout, terrified of drowning. Then he took up arms, put tackle on the most, and steered himself by stars through gales. Once upon a time from womb of earth, the gods were born, and he bowed down to worship them. He worked the land, stubbed the forest, and harnessed stallions. His furrows cropped, he feasted his eyes on hays and herds as far as the horizon. The wind is no more swift or mysterious than his mind and his words. He's mastered thinking, roofed his house against hail and rain, and worked out laws for living together. O oh, Zeus, on high, beyond all human reach, nothing, O oh, twist you, nothing ever will. It cannot be loud by sleep or slow by time. O oh, power of Olympus, O oh, power of made light, now and forever your law is mine. The city will reward him, but let him once overstep what the city allows, tramp downright or treat the law willfully as his own word. And let this wonder of the world remember, he'll have put himself beyond the pale. And when he comes begging, we'll turn our backs. Now, what's happened? Is this a god at work? Antigone, child of doom, have you gone wrong the law? This is the one we call Jurassic, attending to the corpse. Where's Creon gone? Creon knows when he's needed. He's coming now. Needed? Why am I needed? King Creon, sir, there's no such thing as an oath that can't be broken. Circumstances change and your mind changes. After the going oath you gave us here, we swore we were off for good. But every now and then, the thing you tardily let yourself imagine actually happened. So here we are again. And here's the one that was covering up the corpse. We were on turn of flesh. She was our prisoner and ours alone. No need to draw lots this time, we can tell you. And now, sir, she's yours. And it's up to you to judge her and convict her as you please. And let us go. We deserve to be discharged. Our job is done. How did you find her? At her work, for all to see, in Terran Polonices. And you stand over this? This is the truth? You said nobody used to bury, and we caught her burying the corpse. Will that do? How was she observed and caught? Describe it. Oh, I'll describe it gladly. After your tongue lashing, we went back and joined the search and told them we were all marked men, so we did what we could do. We approached the corpse and cleaned it down and peeled away the clothes. It was going off, so we stationed ourselves at points around the hill, out of the wind, you know, because of the smell. It was every man on guard watching the nets and ready to fight pounce the minute he nodded off. And all this while there's this fireball of a sun going up and up into the sky until we think. You could hardly bear it. The ground was like gridiron. And then what happens? A whirlwind out of nowhere, leaves whipped off trees, flying sand and dust. The plain below has disappeared, and the hills up on the horizon, like the sky was actually vomiting black air. So we closed our eyes and braced ourselves. For whatever plague it was, the gods were sending. And then it clears, and this one's standing there, crying her eyes out. She sees the bare corpse, and she lets out a screech, and she starts to curse whoever did the deed. She, she was like a wild bird around an empty nest. She lifted dust in her hands and let it fall. She poured water three times from her urn, taking care to do the whole thing right. When we captured her, she showed no sign of distress, denied no thing she was accused of doing, then or earlier. But... Here's what's strange. I felt a certain sadness coming over. I mean, it's one thing to be let off the hook yourself, another to lend your friends in trouble. But if we don't watch out for ourselves, who will? 
you there, studying the ground. Hold up your head and tell us, is this true? It's true. I admit it. All right. You're in the clear. So now, clear off. You then. Tell me, and be quick about it. Did you or did you not know that the proclamation forbade all this? I did know. How could and I? Didn't everybody? And still, you dare to disobey the law? I disobeyed because the law was not the law of Zeus, not the law ordained by justice. Justice willing deep amongst the gods of the dead. What they decree is immemorial and binding for us all. The proclamation had your verse behind it, but it was a mortal force, and I, also a mortal, choose to disregard it. I abide by statutes utter and immutable, unwritten, original, God-given laws. Was I going to humor you or honor gods? Sooner or later, I'll die anyhow, and sooner may be better in this case. The death penalty is almost a relief. If I had to live, with the knowledge that Polynices plays above ground, insulted and defiled, that is much worse than any doom that may come from here. The swath is in her comes from Oedipus. She gets them from her father. She won't relent. <laughs> we'll wait and see. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the collapse. Iron that's forged the strongest snaps the quickest. Well, she may well be, but even the wildest horses come to heel when rind and bit it right. Subordinates were just not made for insubordination. When she defied the general order, Antigone had already gone too far. But by flaunting that defiance in my face, it's her beyond the pale. Who does she think she is? The man in charge? Have I to be the woman of the house and take her orders? She has brought death sentences upon herself and her sister. Yes, yes, yes. Smini is involved in this thing too. The pair of them. My own sister's daughters. In it. Up to the hilt. But neither seed nor breed will save them now. Get us Mimi out here. She was in the house a while ago, raving out of her mind. <coughs> That's how guilt affects on people. They simply break, and everything comes out. But the barefaced ones, the ones who defy you when they're found they're worse again. Will it be enough for you? More than enough. No wonder you do it fast. Anything I have to say to you or you to me is sheer exacerbation. I have never done a more nobler thing than bury my brother Polynices. And if these people were so afraid of something unpatriotic, they'd say the same. But you are king. And because you're king, you won't be contradicted. So you know something nobody else in Thebes knows. They all know. They're just too afraid to say it. But you're so high and mighty, you've got no qualms. None. There's no shame in burying the brother. Teocles also died in the war. My father is my mother's son. Yes, dead. And the son, when you honor Polynices. The dead are going to be crushed the dead. So wrongdoers and the once wronged fare the same. Polynices is no common criminal. He terrorized us. He stood by us. Religion dictates the burial of the dead. Dictates the same for loyal and disloyal. Who knows what loyalty is in the other world? Even there, I know my enemy. And I know my friends, where I assist with love when you set it on. Go then, and love your fill in the underworld. No woman will dictate the law to you. Look, it's me, in tears. For a sister, for herself. 
You blood sucker, you two face parasite, the pair of you at me like a pair of leeches. Two vipers spitting venom at the throat. Speak. You now. You helped her, didn't you? Or are you going to claim you're innocent? I helped her, yes, if I'm allowed to say so. And now I stand with her to take what comes. I won't allow this. Justice won't allow this. You wouldn't help. We cut all ties. It's over. But now I'm with you. I want to throw myself like a lifeline into your sea of trouble. You made your choice. You chose to save life. I was against your choice and made it clear. You can't just pluck honor up the bush because it's implant. You forfeited your right. Don't rob me of all honor. Let me die with you and act right by the dead. You can't do this as me. You're still alive. I'm long gone over to the dead. If Antigone dies, how will I keep on living? Ask Rion since he seems so fond of him. What good does it do to you, twisting the life like this? I can't help it, dear heart. It hurts me too. But even at this stage, is there not something I can do? You can save yourself. That is my honest wish. And be forever shamed in my own eyes. One world stood by you and one stood by me. Two worlds, both equally offended. This is incredible. One of them had her father's madness in her from the start. But I never thought to see it in this me. You think, Creon, that when you drive us to the edge, we won't go over? You went over long ago the minute you linked up with this one here. My sister is the main tray of my life. Your sister was. There's no is. You mean you killed your own son's bride-to-be? I would and I will. He has other fields to plow. He loves her utterly. For him, there is no one else. No son of mine will take a condemned wife. Poor, poor Haymon, to have a father like you. You and your marriage talk. Too late for that. Do you mean, sir, you'll rob Haymon of this woman? Hades will rob him first. The sentence, though, has been decided on. It has, by me. And I, remember, have your affirmation. Get her away from here. And the other one. Women were never made for this assembly. From now on, they'll be kept in place again. You better be. Yes, keep an eye on them. When the end's in sight, They'll all get desperate. Even the bravest will make a run for it. 